On this episode of Crying in My Car, a podcast for teachers, we talk about the art of paper folding. The students have lost that art. We need to bring it back. Also, in Oklahoma, teachers are being asked to pay back a $50,000 sign-on bonus. Why and what were these people thinking asking for it back from a broke teacher? And lastly, we are going to discuss type A and type B teachers and what's the difference and why one just can't stand being around the other. Tune in. Crying in my car starts right now. Hey everybody, we're Crying in My Car, a podcast for teachers. My name is Devin Siebold. We got James Yon in the house, the parent, the teacher, the comedy will hopefully uh, help you laugh a little bit to work off that stress of the work week. Um, James, it's been a good one, man. It's been good. We're doing well. We're doing good things. I've, I've seen heard. The views heard. are up. Everything is, is looking good across the board. People are talking. They are. And not only that, but I was finally out able to do some shows, the board teachers comedy shows. I was going to ask you how that's yeah. going, man. It's going great, but this year we're doing something a little different. There's no paid meet and greets. It's we just... Just go out there and we talk to people. So I get to talk to everyone. And let me tell you right now, one out of three people crying in my car. I love crying nice, in my car. I'm man. here because of crying in my car. Yes. I listen to crying. I love you and James. It's the best. Aww. Wouldn't be where I am today without Aww. crying in my car. Nice, yep. man. You helped me quit my job. Things like that. <laughs> and <laughs> but not in a good way. I did. <laughs> you know what? Most people go, I wouldn't have continued teaching mm-hmm. if I didn't have the laughs. But there's a like one out of every like 10 or so that is like, Oh, thanks for telling me to quit. Yeah. I needed to hear it. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't really tell you to quit. I just, you know, tried you know. to make it humorous. Yeah. Sir, you, what do you do now? Well, I donate blood. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. You saw purpose in what we were saying, and I get that. But yeah. crying in my car fans, abundant. I loved seeing nice. it. I loved hearing about it. I, I even saw some comments on our recent YouTube video. Mm-hmm. Saying, hey, nice to talk to you. I'm the one that was fangirling, saying crying in my car. Oh. And uh, truly, I recognized her photo, but there was a lot that said it. It uh-huh. wasn't just one or two. You nice. know, I was, so, yeah, it's getting out there. We're making the round. Gotcha. If you haven't seen one of the Board Teachers Comedy Tour shows, you got to check us out. We are touring all over. I don't know when this episode will release, but I'm going to guess we're probably in the Northeast because that's where we usually are. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got a bunch of great shows coming up. So I've got a ton of new material. It's been great nice. working that out. Nice. I've wrote some nice. some edgy jokes, some things that I'm considering putting out there. I haven't even done them yet. Ooh. Uh, I just wrote them and they're ready. Okay. But I just I gotta find the right crowd. I gotta find the cool kids. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the rough teachers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it, when I when I look out in the crowd and I see a a, a, a let's say a one to one ratio of teacher to Miller Light cans. That's the crowd. That's, That's the one that I test that out. That's on. it. So, but mm. yeah, it's been it's been fun. Now we started off in the Northeast in Maine. That's in January. Terrible idea. <laughs> but by the way, amazing crowds. Very cold. Very cold. You know why? Laughter helps you heat up. It does. So yeah, that's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Now, James, I had something happen to me in the hotel. And I don't know if you ever heard of this, but I had to Google it because I thought I was going insane. What? I So I, I literally, I'm telling you right now, this took hours of my day up. Oh my God. I arrived there the day before because snow. And okay. I was like, I need to get in early don't Mm -hmm. want to get snowed in not able to or snowed out not able to get to the show yes so i arrived a day early i check into the hotel and that night i go to lay down and the sheet is like just clinging to my body and i'm like i start moving it and it's pitch black in the room and james (laughs) i can see sparks flying off of the sheets not playing by the way all over i'm touching the the pillow i touch the pillow sparks I am like losing my mind. I I get up and the it's one of those hotels where the lights are like in the board uh, and I go I'm like there's a loose wire. This whole this whole bed is electrified. <laughs> And I, if, if I if I if I try to sip water, I'm dead. <laughs> Wait a minute, Dev. You thought the sheets, <laughs> everything was electrified, Dude, was conducting electricity. I'm not kidding. I walked around that room. Everything I touched, I I, I mean the doorknobs to everything. It was so much static. 
And I was like, and then I read online that if you take a clothes hanger and you run it along the sheets, it'll get rid of it. Yeah. It did not. Okay. Still. And so I was like, what is going on here? And um, I I was paranoid. I mean, I was up the whole night. I l- tried sleeping with no sheets. That doesn't work, no. especially when it's 10 degrees outside. Nah, not at all. And then I, I switched different covers, and I was like, maybe if I just put on my jacket and I lay down, I'm still so staticky. Mm-hmm. My clothes are clinging to my body. What is going on? I don't know. So I Googled it. I was like, it's static in hotel bed. Wait, and- wait, wait. Can I just say this? I'm sorry. The geek in me just wants to be like, you looked it up on Google. You now have superpowers. Like- <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh-huh, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I thought about that for a second. Right. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, it, w- it turns out, and I've, I've never lived in a cold environment. No, okay? we're Floridians. But it turns out that when it's super dry, when mm-hmm. it's cold out, it can cause an increase in static in a lot of fabrics. No, Did you know, know that? that? No, not at all. I've never heard of that. And, Ever. And there's probably people like listening to me going, you're wrong. It was electrified bed. Uh, <laughs> but, but I I was, I was, read about it and it said that there's a lot of static in cold environments because, huh. it, because there's no humidity in the air. Oh. And it said you need a humidifier to turn on in a cold room because that uh. will then get rid of the – or add moisture and it will – Get rid of that. Yeah. And so I'm, I was there for two nights. I was absolutely miserable. Were you really? I was so everything clinged to me. Gotcha. Do you realize, James, that I got home and I opened up my suitcase and Kate grabbed the shirt out and it went. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like pulling the shirt off and yeah. she's like. What, what in the heck? The whole suitcase was electrified. I don't know what happened. That's crazy, it though. It followed me to every hotel, and I I, I was, oh, uh, I couldn't. I, I, I give you credit, though, because I wouldn't know what that was, and I am going to immediately think, oh, this room's haunted. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I was I'm... really close to opening the window and letting the snow come in, come in. <laughs> and provide a little bit of moisture and just wet everything, and then I'm fine. That's but... fine. You could have made <laughs> was... an igloo in your room. <laughs> just a little igloo, yeah. But I, I don't know if that's a thing. Maybe people can tell me about it. I... I... No, I Googled it. I'm trying to imagine the sheet just sticking to you. It just felt uncomfortable because it was a weird kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you, did, did you ever see Close Encounters of the Third Kind when they put the sheet over the guy yes. and they cut it out? That was me the entire <laughs> night. <laughs> it felt it was, just it, I didn't have to be tucked in. It was just. Yeah. Your bed like, was literally instantly. hugging you. Yeah. It was like a night. food saver was at the feet, foot of the bed and oh. somebody hit the button and it just it, sucked sh- all the air that's out. That's it. Right. Yeah. It was. But what was worse is like everything I touched shocked me. And you could literally turn out the lights. And I had a video on my phone. I'll show it to you later mm-hmm. of like I would touch things and it would just that's 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 trippy though yeah like i don't like that at all especially because inside the pillowcase was a zipper and so the zipper was metal oh and it was inside the pillowcase so it wasn't shocking me but it was conducting the electricity Mm -hmm. so literally i could sit there and push my finger on the pillow and just see a line of glow and it was like the coolest weirdest thing Mm -hmm. i've ever seen no yeah so so for me i would have been no it's a ghost yeah we gotta go i'm going to northeast bringing humidifier by the way bring humidifier because i'm (laughs) never dealing with that ever again so uh and i'll be in i think we'll be in massachusetts again of course you will yeah (laughs) now can i say this about your tour Mm -hmm. i love everything that you guys do but you got some pretty amazing dates coming up yeah i mean you're traveling to canada my friend yeah canada and now we actually are extending our stay. We're, we were doing Hawaii, Alaska, Canada. Come on. Now we're doing to Hawaii. Oh. So now you're going to be able to say Hawaii? Because, Hawaii. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I will, <laughs> there you go. I'm going to come back and I'll do one of those uh, dances. Yeah. You know, like, I, I don't know. I don't want to disrespect the culture. But, but you'll know it by then. Yeah, you'll know it. I'll yeah, know it. I'll gotcha. be I'll be one with the people gotcha. there. And, uh, yeah. That's awesome, though, man. Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's cool. And, uh, you know, seeing all the places for sure is amazing. I just wish it was, you know, not five degrees out when mm. we see them <laughs> yeah <laughs> it'd be nice to go out there yeah, yeah. It, I, it was funny because we went to this um diner uh-huh. in maine and i walked in and she's like it'll be about 20 minutes and i was like okay and she's like you have to you have to stand outside i was like what 
She's what, like, yeah, stand outside because there was tiny little waiting room, and I was just standing there. And she's like, she goes, well, we can't have everybody standing in here, so you have to stand outside. And I go outside, and there's a row of like 15 cars, and everybody's sitting in their car, and I don't have a car, so I'm just standing in front, like, can I get in your car? Yeah. Can I- <laughs> I'm so cold right now. <laughs> They're like, we're not gonna let you bring that static electricity yeah. in this car. <laughs> I touch the door, and it starts. What the heck? <laughs> Push the start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it That's was awesome, very, man. very uh, cold out there. But I waited, and I had the lobster Benedict, and I indulged. Okay. And it was a pound of lobster meat on top of the – oh, my god. I love gosh. eggs Benedict to begin with. Oh, yeah, but favorite. lobster Benedict? Yep. That sounds decadent. It was decadent. It was also when – here's the problem that I have. I'm in Maine, mm-hmm. and it says market price. You are the market. Market. <laughs> It's you got it right outside the door. How much did it cost you? It's just say Maine's price. Yeah, you want <laughs> the market. I'm like, because yeah. I'm like, because I see market price and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's gonna be yeah. pricey. And it was pricey. I think it was like forty bucks, and uh, that was my indulgence. The rest of the time was straight up gotcha. Jersey Mike's and there you go. and Domino's because. But fat kid in me is like worth it one time. Yeah, yeah. I, that's the thing. You're in Maine. You I'm have to on eat seafood. The, I'm on the water in Maine. Yeah. And I'm looking at uh as Betty's Diner or something. Becky's Becky's Diner. Becky's Diner. And it's like well known there. And mm-hmm. they they're known for the lobster Benedict. And I was like, this is it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is what you do. Oh my god. And uh, that that's what you do. Good. Yeah. I'm it's like going well. to Napa. You're gonna have a glass of wine. You are. You're in Napa. It's <laughs> what they do. They even serve wine at AA meetings. There. They do. Like that's yeah, what happens. They're, yeah. they're like, come in, <laughs> tell us your story, and have a sip. <laughs> sift, sift. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. You're staticky. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, but I, so I wanted to talk about you know some teacher things, but I wanted to bring up something that I think is lost. Okay. okay? I recently did a state of teaching on the paper waste. Mm. Okay. Now, the paper waste in schools is enormous. If you haven't seen that state of teaching, it should be coming out about the time of this episode. So mm-hmm. look for it. And uh, But one of the things that I was thinking of, like when I was doing the research of the paper waste, is how much wasted paper there used to be when we were in school mm. on paper things. The art of paper folding has vanished oh, from yeah. the schools. Mm-hmm. Like not just the – you remember the the – uh, football. Yes. Oh, oh no. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, one, yeah. The that fortune one, teller. The fortune teller. Yeah, yeah the and fortune I remember teller. The football game. Yeah. I couldn't make the fortune teller. I had really? to get other people to make the fortune teller. That's be my jam. The the paper um, football. football was one that I could make. Uh, I envied the people that could make the ninja star. The ninjas. If you made that. a ninja star and you had a ninja star, mm. you you were the ninja. That's right. You were. That's <laughs> and how it, was, it worked. Yeah, yeah. It was absolutely an amazing, baffling experience. But one thing that we used to make all the time that I I talked to my kids about this after I researched it. I was like, hey, have you guys ever made, and they were like, made what? A paper airplane. The paper airplanes have gone away. That? And they didn't know. I was like, That's th- wild. I said, yeah, I said, here, you fold it in half, and then you have the center line, uh-huh. then you fold it again, and then fold the wings. That's a paper airplane. Now, if you want to do a jet, Fold it down Ooh. one more time. We used to have paper airplane competitions yes. and see how far you could get it in class. Did you ever make the back rudder thing? Oh yeah, remember that? Absolutely. Remember that? Yep. Oh, and that sometimes was... you like uh, sometimes you put the, the the. What's funny is I would fold it so fancy and it looked great. Then I go. <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> like, that. Mm, okay, well maybe I need to study uh, thrust a little bit better. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna be an engineer. Yeah, yeah no, engineer's not working. Mm-hmm. It was it was funny because uh, I remember we had in fourth grade. We were studying something, I don't know, measurements. And uh, we had where we all built paper airplanes. And then we stood and then we threw it and we measured how far it went. There you go. In feet and inches and mm-hmm. things like that. That was our introduction. That was pretty cool. Uh, but I remember literally, he's like, here's your paper. And I was like, dun, dun, done. And I just made a basic paper airplane. Everybody else was like, okay, I'm going to make a jet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make a this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make a that. I'm like, you don't miss. With the original plan. No, the no. original blueprint is Tried there for a reason. And true. Yes. And so literally I everybody threw and they're getting pretty far. And then I come and I just go, whoo. And I mean just whoo. And it just And you ever throw one and you catch the right air? It, it is yeah. just it's yeah. not even dropping. It's no. just you're like, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And then it goes down and then it's like, ooh, back up a uh, little uh, bit more. Yeah. And it yeah. helped that I'm six six and I literally <laughs> 
just reached across and the, dropped it. The entire room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I remember that so distinctly. And man, we had patterns. We yes. had, hey, oh man, you made a cool new paper airplane. I don't know if it's just because it's the TikTok generation and the, the cell phone generation is lost on them. But man. They don't do cool. Like That they, was an art. You ever make the boat that could float? The paper boat? Yes. Yeah, I forgot float, about that. You can float it actually down uh, the gutters and stuff like that. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. We used to do uh, grass. Did you ever have the grass blade races? No. So we would take a gra- p- grass blade off and the gutters, you know, they'd have the water going. Yeah. And you'd set it down and we'd be like, go. And we would let it go and the grass blades would like fight over, you know, and then go down the whole way. I do that. Yeah, man. that's, that's okay. not bad. There's still time. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to drive by your house. You're like, go, go. Uh, but Yelling yeah. at the kids, in your face. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that kind of stuff, man. I just, I don't know. The paper, paper, I remember mm. the paper boats. I remember the paper paper airplanes and i also remember uh the fortune tellers and also some people had like really good ways of folding notes Mm -hmm. and i remember i kept a note from an ex for a long time because she folded it into a heart did you ever get the heart yes you can do the heart fold no no i can't do it but i love seeing it because and girls could do it It, yeah it was was like some kind of secret passed down to all the girls right from generations like they could all make the heart (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I, I used to love that stuff and those notes and everything. And again, it was all paper waste. That's beside the point. Yeah. But it was also the creativity. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes they even sold at the book fair the origami art. And I remember one year Ooh. they actually had one book that I've never seen since, but I thought it was the coolest thing. I didn't get it. All my friends got it. And you open it up and it was all tissue paper. But the tissue paper had the outline of the stuff. The art of paper folding, I just feel like it's gone. And it's sad to me that these kids don't have that in their life. So well, bring it back. Yeah, they don't I mean, have that because they have other like devices now that they play on and do stuff with. But I still think it would be cool. It would if you if you'd actually get a kid to step away from their phone and hey, let me show you something. Yeah, I yeah. know. I remember the the um, paper football distinctly because oh. it was the first time that I got really in trouble because really? I I have some long fingers. Oh. I was I was six. I was six six when I was twelve. True story. Not making that up for the podcast. I was this tall when I was twelve. So you towered over everyone. Yeah. So yeah. like the paper football, I'm like, Foom, and it's like, and it hit the teacher. Oh. And so the teacher, and and oddly enough, um, that was interference. <laughs> so <laughs> I get a second <laughs> kick. <laughs> You're in a principal's office. Hey, rules are rules. Yeah, I get to go again. Are, I don't know. Are, are we placing side bets here? This seems a little <laughs> judgmental. <laughs> yeah, but it was That's it was funny. cool. But I remember that. Uh, so, all right, uh, let's go into the teachers in the news, my friend. Shall yes, we? We shall. There's a charter school. And somebody sent me this, and they go, we're seeing this trend all over. So charter schools get paid for what, James? Do you know? Do you know how much money a charter school? So if we start a private company Mm -hmm. right now, the James and Devon Empire, Mm -hmm. and we form our own school, Mm -hmm. how do we get money from the government? Isn't it government grants? Yeah, based on? The attendance. Yes. uh, How many people we have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Charges in Indiana have been filed against people who apparently ran an online charter school in Indiana. They've been accused of inflating enrollment numbers, and they defrauded the Indiana Department of Education out of $45 million. So, side note, James and Devon Institute of Well-Being and Paper Airplanes is starting up soon. Now, all you have to do mm-hmm. is you have to bring a uh, uh, one of the dryer sheets, and you have to help me out. <laughs> <laughs> or bring us paper in the form of Benjamin Franklin. Yes, that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, we don't need that. The government will give us that. That's true. Yeah, you, free. <laughs> free. It is free. No, but uh, open enrollment numbers provided by the charter schools apparently uh, were very, very high. They said they they had 4,500 students, and um, they have been charged with uh, committing wire fraud, 16 counts of wire fraud, 57 counts of money laundering. Oh, my Ooh, goodness. Somebody is uh, going yeah, away. Yeah, but apparently they they went to interview students. Uh, they went to interview the student's parents uh, who was enrolled, and apparently the student had passed away a long time ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the that that's an interesting conversation mm-hmm. how's your kid doing in school <laughs> you know <laughs> wait a minute wait it's yeah. like oh yeah your child passed mm. uh sorry about that but um 
okay, I'm trying to say this the right way. That's an interesting thing that that's based off of attendance because now it has me wondering who's thought of this before and who's currently doing so that. So this is a current thing that we're seeing a lot of okay. this spouting up. Yes. Is that these numbers are kind of inflated. inflated. And also sometimes the numbers are wrong. And what I mean by that is when we actually got a count of numbers, we had a physical count in our school. Mm -hmm. It was usually the first and third day of school. Everything changes. So kids walk in mm -hmm. and we do a count. Yes. Three days in, kids walk in, we do a count. A lot of those kids leave and That's they move right. to other schools. Some more kids sometimes come in, but sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you can take those original kids and go, we did a count on this and look how many kids we added and not subtract the ones you lost Got because it. they were originally counted. That's right. You know, so those numbers can be misleading mm -hmm. and yes, also uh, get a lot of money yes. from people. So, yes. Yeah. So I, I read that and uh, apparently, you know, they're. Um, here's, interestingly enough, they said that the money, uh, the 45 million has already been spent. Ooh. Yep. Uh, on private school tuition for their kid. <laughs> <laughs> the irony. Yeah. Uh, but they said That's they, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they bought vehicles, boats, coins, uh, private school tuition. Ooh. And, uh, they said that there's a lot of that money is, is uh, still out there. Apparently they, they haven't accounted for all of it. So. Uh, 10 to 20 years in federal prison. Yeah. Can I tell you what I'd like to see about that? What's that? I'd like to see them do a breakdown of how much money you get per kid. So they said 4,500 kids they were mm -hmm. estimating. So that would be, you know, at 45 million, uh, you know, you're looking at n a number. That's crazy because... They... <laughs> Sorry, my... I, know, my I, I, I was waiting, I'm like, okay, yeah, here we go. Know, if you carry the seven, <laughs> and you, you look at the... But, I I mean, obviously, it would be uh, uh, 10,000, right? That'd be crazy. Forty? No, no, $100,000. Because if you, if you look kid, at it that so way... It's like over 10 years, $1,000 maybe. So if you per, look at their P&L, it's yeah. all broken down per kid, not even by money. Well, how much this year for a new gym? Oh, that'll be 1,000 kids. Yeah. Yeah, I need that many kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one. This is a this one. Honestly, I think is is really really something we need to consider for the future. A teacher saves a choking preschooler. Oh wow! There was a preschooler that was sitting eating a meal, started choking, and uh, was saved luckily by this uh, teacher that came in and helped out the uh, the preschooler that was choking. Now, for, okay, we're gonna clap first for that because that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. yeah. It was forty seconds long, and the uh, preschool teacher Lydia Watson. I just okay. wanted to Shout make out to sure that I got that name in there. Uh, she said, "You know what? I'm just grateful." I knew what to do in that situation. I had all the kiddos sitting at their tables. I saw a kid that was sitting at his table and it looked totally fine, but something was going wrong. And uh, apparently uh, there was a piece of chocolate that was in, uh, started choking on the chocolate. And uh, basically said, walked over and knew right away what to do, dislodge the food, saving the kid's life. That's amazing. Huge. Uh, now here's the thing. Uh, the, the Apparently, uh, the kid is acting like nothing happened. The teacher's like, I, you know, it's what I'm here to do. The mom has stepped up and said, look, this is a huge thing. And not only that, it's something that maybe more teachers need to be trained in for first aid and CPR. And that's true. Yes. I never received CPR or first aid training. First aid a little bit, yeah. but it was always like if this per it was always case by case basis. Yeah. You have a child in your class that is allergic to peanut butter. If this happens, here's how you use an EpiPen on them. Gotcha. You know, here's how this it, it was always just what that one particular child needed. Mm -hmm. But CPR saves all the children if there's something wrong. You or know, the Heimlich Maneuver. Heimlich like, Maneuver, yes, CPR, absolutely. any of that stuff. There should be some first aid training, and I, I, it's not required. That was going to be, when I first heard you read the story, that was my first thought. I'm like, oh, I wonder if teachers are required to know that. But you're saying it's not a requirement. Not a requirement. And that's weird, too, because I'm required to do lunch duty. And that's uh, there's a <laughs> lot of, uh, yeah. you know, I yeah, do lunch duty. Yeah, that makes duty. sense. There's yeah. kids all around me. Yeah. I mean, hundreds of children. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of maybe two or three teachers in there. Mm-hmm. It, it not none of us know how to do properly do the Heimlich. You know, there's a lot of kids at risk. Yes. And and in school especially, I mean, there's children, mm. young kids, tons of young kids. Yeah. They're hyper. They're freaking out. They're, oh, grapes. Oh, I can't tell you how many times on grape days I see grapes all over the floor. Why? Toss it up. <laughs> and it's all teachers. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I love doing that, man. Yeah. yeah. By the way, side note, and I'm not making fun of this kid. I'm reiterating what I saw. Okay. I saw one time in the cafeteria a kid 
he he stood up and he goes, watch this. And he takes a grape and he throws it sky high in the air and he's opening his mouth and it comes down, it hits his glasses and they fall off and they shatter. Uh And all the kids started laughing. And I said, here is where a super villain is born. Mm -hmm. Because that is the moment I had to come over and be like, hey man, it's okay. And he was, he didn't shit, you know, it didn't phase him. He was laughing too. Yeah. You know, but I was like, next time don't draw attention to yourself (laughs) before you do something you may have never done. (laughs) By the way, famous last words. Hey, watch this. Watch this. Yeah. (laughs) Very, very famous last words. But yeah, all those grapes, man, somebody chokes. I don't know what to do. Mm. I mean, honestly, the extent of my CPR training, you want to know where I got my CPR training, James? Baywatch. Nope, but close. Good one. That's a great one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. but uh, no, CPR training. CPR. What? Airports. I did one of the dummies one time. Ah. I was waiting at the gate, and my plane had been delayed, and I saw the CPR thing, and I was like, I've seen this so many times. Let me give it a shot. And it's got the little dummy on it, and it's like press here. And so, like, I was pressing and like learning the rhythm of Mm -hmm. which to do it. And uh, I don't know. I did it for a few minutes to where now I think I'd be at least comfortable going, yeah, let me try it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, something like that. You know where I got all my training, CPR? What? Movies. Movies. (laughs) Yeah, movies. Yeah. (laughs) I read a a TikTok one time that if you do it to the beat of staying alive, that's it. Yeah. Uh, 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 staying alive. alive. Stand, yeah, and literally the song yeah, is it about. Is. <laughs> it's like, please do, please, please do. do. <laughs> oh, my CPR involves me giving a dramatic pause and taking my glasses off. So yeah, that's where yeah, I learned yeah. mine. Um, so this next story is touching. I love it. I love seeing stuff like this. Uh, Heather Benoit is a uh, teacher, thirty-five year old uh, program director. She used to teach first graders. She said. She got a, a gift from a student a long time ago, and it was a purple crayon. Mm-hmm. And the, the child, when he gave it to her, said, uh, uh-huh. she opened it up and said, purple is your favorite color. And, you know, it's, it's a great story because it's basically why the teacher kept the purple crayon. Yeah. She said, I kept the purple crayon because it means something to me. A student mm-hmm. thought of me, yeah. you know, and gave me, the, and it's something so insignificant. And I would love to know, teachers, is there something a student gave you that you've held on to That's for nice. all these years? I've got one. And I, I hope uh, she she watches this, but I actually have a uh, a um, keychain, uh-huh. and I had a student give it to me. It says, "Live the life you have imagined." And she gave it to me at one of my early comedy shows when I was imagining being a great stand up comedian. Look at that! And and so I kept it on there, and I look at it all the time. I'm like, you know what? I need to go for it. I need to go for it. And I remember when I left That's teaching, nice. this was one of the first things I looked at, and I was like, you know what? Go for it. And Aww. I went for it. And look where I am. Here. Yes. And it went. It worked. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I, I obviously cherish it very much. And uh, she's messaged me before. and been like, hey, do you still have that? And I'm like, sure do. Every day, you know, on every key. You know key. what's crazy? Yeah. I have, you're not going to believe this. I have what a keychain. And it says, ride Devin's coattails. It that's, does. <laughs> that's, 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 that's amazing. <laughs> yes. I gave that to you. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, oh, that, so do you have a purple crayon too? I do. <laughs> I, do, I do. But I can imagine as a teacher, that meant the world to you. Yeah, absolutely. That meant everything absolutely. to you, Absolutely. It's, it's so cool. But it was also cool because she prefaced it with a story. So I actually did. I could not get my students to read. I, I taught intensive reading and they wanted nothing to do with reading. You know, like here's book. Book is boring. I don't like book. You know, I don't want to read it. And it was like, Okay. I need you to read, but I want you to read something you might enjoy. Yes. So I tried a little bit of comics, some, some, you know, uh, what do they, what do they call it? Um, graphic novels. Graphic novels. Yeah. Some graphic novels. I'm such a uh, Some little short uh, yeah. stuff, just to try to get little short stuff to get them involved. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to get them thinking on a deeper level. Well, I couldn't do that on chapter books and be like, read this chapter, come back, we'll discuss it. So what I did is I would pick out songs that had deep lyrics. I had a an English oh. teacher do this to me a while back. She did it with Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. Mm-hmm. Fell in love with that song. We looked into the song deep lyrics. Mm-hmm. I like rock music. So mm-hmm. I had them read the lyrics to One by Metallica. Oh, that's a good one. It is a great that's one. That's a good one. Now, reading the lyrics, you're like, what is this about? I can't remember anything, you know, can't tell if this is true or real things. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and uh, 
it's deep lyrics. And I had them read it and mm-hmm. then write what they thought about it. Then we watched the music video. And the music video, as you can tell, is about a person who was injured in a war. Uh, in war, yeah, mm-hmm. and lost the ability for all their legs and limbs and their ability to see, hear, and d- talk. And uh, and it's, it's their pain that they're in. They're trapped in their mind. And it was so deep. And I tell you, all the kids... I mean, reading every lyric, analyzing it, watching the video. Oh, that lines up with this. And it was such a turning point. And literally, she comes back, and when she handed this to me, she goes, I still remember when you played Metallica. She goes, that was, that was the best. And she goes, it was so deep. I had just listened to the song and not realized the meaning behind it. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes, you know, it takes, uh, like, I don't know, sometimes you listen to lyrics a little differently. Also, sometimes you listen to um, uh, songs like... Uh, Dr. Feelgood. Yes, <laughs> and you're like, okay, well, that's, all right, that's all right. different. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that because I had a teacher inspire me to read more, but it wasn't music lyrics. It was comic books. Yep. That's what made me become a great reader was, oh, wow, this is, I really like this. And mm-hmm. I started reading more. And then my English teacher got me to start reading more things and got me reading novels and that's where it comes from yeah so teachers you hope it's a stepping stone you hope you hope so yeah yeah all right uh plus i got to listen to one seven times there a you day. go that's awesome <laughs> now that the war is through yeah, with me. Do that song. yeah uh, so song. all right this next one enrages me Uh-oh. i've i've seen so many posts about it it's very much uh talked about on the news today uh the um the osage county uh teachers are suing because they uh, this is in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Ryan Walters, uh, their their uh, state superintendent, is ordering them to pay back a fifty thousand dollars signing bonus. Now, it's not because they didn't work there. It's not because they didn't do the job. It's because there may have been an error in their application. It's because there may have been something that uh, maybe the qualifications weren't entirely met, but the qualifications weren't clear to begin with. All these teachers sound like they are basically being screwed out of the money. That's what it sounds like to me. And to want this money back from teachers who dedicated their time, who did the work, who jumped through the hoops, he's now wanting back the $50,000 for these sign-in bonuses. That's incredible. And they have to pay back all the money with a month's notice. That's what they're they're asking them to do. Because I just get $50,000 and well, sit on it and, you know. I mean, let's be honest. <clears throat> we all know the teachers are balling out here, man. Yep. Yeah. One of the teachers says, it took me 30 minutes to process what was happening. I threw up immediately because there's oh. no way I can pay back this money. Uh, and apparently she said, I read the application, thought she met the requirements, and is wondering why he initially proved their application. That's the other thing. All of these applications were approved. That's on him. You would Th- think? That's on him. You would oh, think? That's you. You said yes. You gave it out. Not my problem. This guy's causing a lot of problems, this Ryan Walters, and he used to be a teacher. That's the thing that baffles me. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> he was a teacher. He was a, a history teacher. And and everybody thought, hey, this guy's we got a teacher out there, and he's done nothing but attack the teachers and gone after them for what they teach in their class and, and basically gone on the war on woke. And he's he's pushed back on the same people that he used to be. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. Mm. I mean, but anyways, this this I think you're crossing the line. Also, this is not a very wealthy county. Uh, first off, it's Oklahoma. Secondly, I did my research. Okay, very nice. Inadvertently, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just last week read uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay, great. By the way, Osage uh, Indians are in the Osage County, mm-hmm. so a lot of these Indians were very wealthy from the oil uh, days. But it's, yeah, for it's, a time. Yes, but it's still <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still a very uh, poor area just outside of there, mm-hmm. and and that's why these sign-on bonuses were so needed because they can't get people to work there, and so yeah, you're hurting people that have already been hurt and persecuted for a very long time. And, and you're so, adding to that, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not on board with this, man. I can't can't get behind it. I feel really bad for them. And there, but the good news is, is that there's a lot of media attention. And you know what? The guy came back and said, I don't care. Double down, yeah, double nice, down. Nice, man. And said, said basically, it's the media's fault for for letting everybody know about this. Oh, we should keep it a secret when yeah. you're screwing people over. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Don't you know, James? Uh, all right. This last one, it's not a big national story. Uh-huh. Danielle Ward. She's a Hilldale Teacher of the Year. Now, the only reason I even – there's a lot of Teachers of the Year out there. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give applause to this one. 
And the reason I'm giving a pause to this one is because I've never seen this or even heard of this. Okay. She's the back-to-back repeat teacher of the Ooh. year. Oh. Bro. She's the Michael Jordan. I know. I literally was like, when they announced it, hopefully they were like, from North Carolina. Throws up baby powder. I just, I've never That's seen awesome, a repeat man. teacher of the year. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. attribute it all to her. That's awesome. She, she's killing it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, I it said willingness to work hard and desire to help kids. She has a true love for education and the kids say she's nice and funny. That's good. So yeah, I mean, that's all, all you need in order to succeed. I think in the in teaching worlds, be nice, be funny, be relatable. Well, let me ask you real quick, Deb. I know we got to move on, but yeah. um, when you are a teacher, do you think that really does help personality getting being able to uh, in, being able to engage the actual students. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, obviously, you have to make some sort of connection to them. I made mine through sarcasm. I was endlessly sarcastic, gotcha. and they loved, and they loved the that. sarcasm. Yes, they, they do. loved me giving them a roundabout response to a ridiculous question, and they they'd ask something, and I'd be like. Okay, here we go. And uh, they, they, they got loved so it. much humor out of mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And they'd also go, is he serious? And then they'd be like, <laughs> no, he's not serious. Uh, but um, yeah, so I think you have to have that connection. I mean, you really have to mm-hmm. meet them somewhere. Whether it's, you don't have to necessarily be funny, but have something relatable to them. Mm-hmm. Have a, a relatable, you know, view, point of view or, or a teaching style that they latch on to. You know what really made me remember my <laughs> teachers, the ones I remember the most from co- um, college and high school? What? When they were real with me. Yeah. When they would tell me real world scenarios that fit what they're trying to teach me. So it's interesting you say that because real to you is a different definition as real to these kids nowadays. Is it really? Yeah. It's almost like, you know, being real, like he's a real one. Uh-huh. It's like you almost have to get on their level of of being ruthless and and mm. aggressive and yes. you know that's and, real to them yeah, that's, it's that's like genuine. you don't take anything yeah. yeah that's it's but it's it's different now i think mm-hmm. nowadays you uh, you're not going to relate to the tiktok generation but Mm-mm. but you can be blunt with them and i think that sometimes they connect a little better to that to that but i may be wrong the direct approach yeah you got you <clears throat> yeah instead of just you know sugarcoating it yeah you can't because they'll think you're sus yeah you're sus <laughs> uh sus you have to like say it but don't close your mouth sus, sus. <laughs> yeah. and then you got to push your hair to the front you don't never mind no, no, james you don't I, do I that but do yeah it, you got to no. push your hair to the front uh all right this next one <clears throat> we're not going to the depths of reddit today but i saw something on reddit it scares me yeah i saw something on reddit that hit me in my soul okay mm. this is the last thing we're going to talk about not teachers in the news just a little topic that i okay. want to discuss uh this hit me in my soul it's just a simple one line that i was like man i relate to that it says uh being a type B teacher makes me feel so inadequate. That's it. That's the post. I don't think I'm a bad teacher, but being around type A staff and teachers stresses me out. Ooh. Do you know type A, type B? I, I do. You do? I, I am married to a type A. <clears throat> are you? Yes. And how do you, are you, what would you consider yourself? Uh, I, I was um, instructed to be type A. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a type b, b uh, yes, yeah no yeah. i honestly i think that type a and type b kind of can go well together in relationships it, for e- the most part it evens each other it out. does even each yeah. other out i i couldn't relate to this more because i really felt this because there were some type a's that were so goal driven so ambitious if you don't know what type a personality is i'll give you just some of the the listings of what they say uh somewhat aggressive and hostile controlling and dominant impatient and tolerant ambitious and goal-oriented self-driven highly competitive sense of urgency fast-paced busy life motivated by challenges easily stressed out also high risk of heart disease (laughs) i don't know why that was in there but forgot one we'll go with what and they think none of those things are wrong. No, they don't. At all. <laughs> now, I'm not against type A people. Me either. No, I, I'm not. I loved they having them. They get things them. done. Yes. I loved having them yeah. working in my, it was like, okay, let's do it. You know, it's like, great, let's do it. You know, but I could also see the type B. So I kind of have both. I'm very competitive, but also easygoing, relaxed, highly flexible, energetic, out, energetic outgoing, Laid back attitude, imaginative and creative for sure. I only love creating things. Lighthearted, 
persuasive, high levels of life satisfaction. I love life at all times. I literally sit at the Lion King in Animal Kingdom and get a tear down my eye because I'm like, this is so beautiful. I think <laughs> I we love have, being alive. We have that in common. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah. definitely take stock in our lives. Yeah. yeah. Friendly and inspiring, self confident, reflective, highly patient, less prone to stress. I mean, I, I think that's me to a T for the most part. Um, but I was around a lot of teachers like that. And, you know, this person says, and it just spoke to me, I don't think I'm a bad teacher, but being around type A staff sometimes stresses me out because sometimes type A wants everybody to be type A. Yes, and they don't understand when you're not. Yeah. So it, it easily frustrates them, yeah. which then makes them act a certain way towards you. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, wow, that's really aggressive. Mm -hmm. Type A wants to make sure things get done. They want to make sure it's done the right way. There's no way around it. But it also be, their way is their the, way the right, right way. way. Yes, that, that's important. Yes, that's Their right. way is the, the right, right way. way. And, and how could you even fathom another way? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> there is none. There is but, none. But yes, you're... So reading this, I think there's a lot of teachers like that. I yeah. didn't go a lot to the teacher break room. I there what we did have a break room. My first and second year, I had a break room. Mm -hmm. After that, we we all met and like we we had the four the quad room. Yeah, and we had a middle planning room, and we would occasionally go in there. But I was very much hermit, pull away. I don't dislike you. Mm -hmm. I just know that when I get around you, I feel very stressed for some reason because mm -hmm. you can't stop stressing me out. Yes, and it's like I don't want to be stressed. I want to be happy. Those and, little moments, those little breaks, I want to enjoy them. Exactly. And so uh, I, I would notice a lot of teachers like that. And I'll tell you right now, the worst is not necessarily the teachers. I don't I don't think that type A is a bad thing. I mm -hmm. want to say it's a very good thing because we need you. Mm -hmm. You're a part of the puzzle. Type A admin. I, I mm -hmm. don't think that's a, a – if you're stressed, we're all stressed. It starts if with If you're head. demanding and it has to be done right now – it's unfortunate, but that's just the way teachers work. We got to, you know, we, we have ways. Mm -hmm. And for an admin to come in and say, all that scrapped, here's the way it's being done, mm -hmm. it stresses us out. And that of is course. not a good thing. You're like, no, this is too much for me. Yeah, because there's I, a lot of type B teachers, a lot. You have to be almost type mm -hmm. B to teach because of the stress levels. You have to be able to de-stress yourself and take yourself out of the situation. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. And if you're a type A teacher, you're going to stress your students. Yep. You are going to make their life miserable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, again, I'm not trying. I know there's Type A teachers going. What? Uh, yeah, I'm not talking bad about you. You found your way to do it. Mm -hmm. Understanding the differences between them will help you get along with each of those different ones. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a Type B, but I've learned some great traits from being around a Type A person for 30 years that has rubbed off on me, and I totally get where they're coming from now. Yeah, yeah. Now I want to say one thing. I want to ask you a question because mm -hmm. I. I feel like I have type A in one area, but I think I have a reason why I'm type A in one area. Okay. I like to get stuff done right now. Yes, you do. And I like to knock it out and go, let's make this happen. Yes, you do. And I picked a plan and I, I knock it out. Yes. And the reason I do it is not that I'm type A. It's because if it's not if it's not done, I'm stressed. Yes, you And are. I don't want to be stressed. <laughs> that is my wife to a T. It has to be completed or I can't rest. Yep. If I know that something is undone, I won't let you rest no. <laughs> until we it, get it done. Exactly. Yes. So, yeah. So, and I understand that. And they, I will say this about you guys. You don't leave anything undone. Mm -hmm. You're highly motivated, and mm -hmm. you usually move up the ladder. Try to. You're very yeah. successful. Yeah. Yes. I get, give you credit. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> that, no, you've got the keychain. Yeah. And... <laughs> All right, James, how can people find you alive, my friend? As always, you guys can find me on social media. If you go to IG or Facebook, it's both the same. James Yon, comedian, that's Y-O-N. And thank you. I keep getting new followers. I love you guys. And now you guys are starting to reach out and we have a little conversation. So keep that up. Yes. Also, be sure to find me online, devincomedy.com, for all the upcoming tour dates with board teachers. As well, I do professional development. I do keynotes. I do speaking in schools. It is something that I absolutely love doing, and it is also something that fills up very quick. So if you want a laughter-filled, informative, and real uh, session from a type B teacher, then <laughs> I would happily do that. Just message me ahead of time, and I'll uh, give you all the info. So thanks again for following. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking. And we'll see you back here next week with a brand new episode of Crying in My Car, a podcast for teachers.
because there might be a clip up there. There might be a clip down there. If it's got our face, if it's other people's stuff, eh, come back. Don't don't click on that, you know, but us. Suggested things, that's us, crying in my car, Devin Siebel, James Yon, board teachers, watch, watch, watch. Um, new trailer for Indiana Jones. No, don't do that. Don't do that. 